Mm, I get lost, I get lost in you like it prisoner walking towards the ocean is hard to imagine how something could swallow you oh, oh. yeah i get lost i get lost in you pearls in your eyes keep me alive wrap me up in a glow soft as a shadow There was a time I would suffer in silence and feel like my pain didn't matter, didn't matter, I thought. Keep on walking, just show your devotion, they don't know you at all. When I grew thorns, the sharpest spears, and I drowned my fears with books and would be at a time that was time for no horizon. Yeah, I am lost, I am lost in you I am no longer searching, I'm no longer yearning Just learning the freedom of floating on So I'm on my way back to work, I'm here downtown um, I have a meeting at 8 o'clock. It's 7.50, so I'm cutting it short. I need to hurry the fuck up. Um, I did want to just go through my incantation before I get to work. I don't know if I've said it on this vlog, but for those of you that have been following me for a minute, you know that I've said it a few times. And I've modeled it after Tony Robbins. And it goes a little something like this. I now command my subconscious mind to give me the humor, the courage, the strength, the confidence, the creativity, whatever it takes to make today and this moment the greatest, most powerful, meaningful, significant, and productive moment that it can possibly be so that the world and everybody around me can change the way that it sees itself for the better right now. Now, I didn't say it with the conviction and the passion that I normally do, because in the middle of that, a, uh, a vagabond is hitting me up. But uh, that's part of life too, man. So I'm actually pretty excited for today. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, this light is actually beautiful and that makes things a lot easier. So let's do it again. I now command my subconscious mind to give me the humor, the courage, the strength, the confidence, the creativity, whatever it takes to make today and this moment the greatest, most powerful, meaningful, significant, and productive moment that it can possibly be so that the world and everybody around me can change the way that it sees itself for the better right fucking now. Yeah, I felt better. I love you guys. Today's Monday, Vlogville, episode 21. Um, it's good to be alive. This one goes out to all my filmmaker friends. Something I've been wanting to talk about, I just never really had time to jump into. Normally I would jump into a Facebook group page and kind of rant about this kind of subject. I haven't given it much thought, but it's something I'm gonna hit on time and time again until it gets into people's heads. And eventually people are going to say Knives Monroe was one of the first people to actually say that. I think a lot of people are still stuck in the 90s when it comes to filmmaking dreams. I saw a meme the other day where somebody said, hey guys, what camera should I buy? And he's surrounded by a sea of people. Hey guys, what lens should I buy? And he's surrounded by a sea of people. And then this one person says, hey guys, what do you think of my project? And he's surrounded by nobody. I mean, that's the kind of like the creative climate that we're living in right now, I've noticed. 
And I think people are still stuck in like this 1994 mentality of I'm gonna write a script and I'm gonna sell it. People message me every single fucking day. Knives, read my script, what do you think, what do you think? And the truth is I don't give a shit. Not because I'm a bad guy, not because I don't care, not because I'm insensitive. But the truth is I don't give a shit because you can, you can have written Casablanca, it doesn't really matter unless you go out and make it. And you go out and you stream it on Facebook Live or you go out there and put it in front of eyeballs so people can actually watch it, review it, and you get that feedback and then you do the next thing. So I don't really give a shit about your script, that's just the truth. I'm not a bad guy. So we're still stuck in this old school mentality and it does bother me because I think it keeps people from really maximizing their potential. It keeps people from really maximizing their moment and they might miss their moment because timing is everything. Compounded with hard work, of course. So, this brings me to the topic of discussion. I think we're in this new era of filmmaking 2.0, if you will. For instance, what I'm doing, let's just use me as an example. I'm not better than you. I don't think I'm better than anybody. It's not about that. The truth is, this just comes down to the modern era, the modern era of what we're capable of, of what we can and can't do when it comes to filmmaking. That has been completely redefined and it's exhilarating. I want you guys to research Casey Neistat if you've never done so. And I want you to research David Rock, AKA D-Rock. Two guys that I'm very bullish on, two guys that I'm incredibly influenced on. And you know what, let's add another person to the list. A guy that may not consider himself a filmmaker, but I think he's one of the best there is, was and ever will be when it comes to what I'm talking about. His name's Cody Weber. You can find him on YouTube under Saturnine Films. Check him out. These guys are like my biggest, most recent influences. Influences. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the Coens. I love Lars von Trier, I love David Lynch, I love Quentin Tarantino as much as the next guy. But the truth is, they're from a different era. And I aspire to continue making long form narratives, short films, feature films, and TV series, do not get me wrong. But I vlog every day because we're the new, we're the new filmmakers and this is what we do. You can call it documentary filmmaking, you can say it's all the same, and it is. I mean, you're not wrong about that. But the truth is, if you were to put Quentin Tarantino, 29 years old, in 2017, and he barely had $5 to his name, I, pr I guarantee fucking to you he'd be filming every day. A guy like J.J. Abrams and Christopher Nolan and everybody that we all look up to, these guys are all in their 40s and 50s today. But the truth is, if they were in the modern era today, you bet your sweet ass they'd be making shit micro content on their iPhones. They do it by any means necessary because that's what a filmmaker does. So we exist in a filmmaking 2.0 culture where we can do that today, where nobody could ever do that before. Francis Ford Coppola couldn't film stuff every single day. I mean, that shit costs money. It's virtually inexpensive. It's basically no cost at this point. And I know I always hit that nail on the head, but it still needs to be said. The truth is, I think it's an exhilarating time to be creative. And it's funny, because once, you've, once you have a project and you hear the crickets chirp, well then you know where you really are. And then you can really grow because then you have areas of opportunity and then you have moments and, and weaknesses that you can kind of expand on if you want to or you can just maximize and go all in on your fucking strengths but i personally i personally rec recommend that so i might be talking too fast you might have to go back from the beginning and watch this video all over again but i'm gonna drop this in the facebook group pages and i'm gonna drop this on youtube and people are gonna go back and say this guy was right and it's not about me versus you it's me versus me and i'm only saying this because i i, I take a look and i think about this stuff and I want to see you guys become your instrument. Realize that things are cheaper than it's ever been. Things are better than it's ever been. And we're in a new era and you need to maximize that. It's a matter of fucking time between, uh, you know, before Facebook goes bullish and goes all in and decides to compete with Netflix, to compete with Hulu and Amazon and attempt to try to take them out of business the way Netflix took Blockbuster out of business. And the terms of indie filmmaking will once again be redefined. And where are you going to be on that battlefield when that time comes? Are you still going to be trying to sell your pilot? Or are you just going to be producing your own series like you can if you wanted to? Are you going to be selling your scripts like we, like we exist in 2001, like we exist in 1994? Or are you going to be doing it by any fucking means necessary no matter what every single day? Why leave all that opportunity and time and flexibility and technology on the table? Do what you can with what you have where you are. End of story. This is gonna be very inside baseball, so if filmmaking is not your thing, go ahead and skip this. That's what this whole episode's gonna be about. So I kinda wanted to expand on the filmmaking 2.0 thing, or the filmmaker 2.0 thing. The truth is, things have never been this way before. It's new. Um, it, it, it transcends freelance, because now we get to tell the stories, like Willy Wonka said. 
We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of the dream. That's a luxury, man. All this shit is fucking decadence. You know, this is all first world problems being creative. It never used to be this way and I appreciate it. I'm gonna say something that is not gonna paint me in a positive light, but it's what, it's what it really is. Um, a few months ago, a filmmaker contacted me and they wanted to collaborate and do stuff. I told them the best thing that I could do for them is create little mini documentaries and kind of follow them around and flip those little short stories into social media. And I think it was gonna be a good idea. Now at the time I didn't have any gear, all I had was this iPhone, which for some people isn't enough, right? For, fu for fuck's sake, I'm filming this vlog, this is episode 21, and I'm filming it on a selfie stick. For some people, that's not really impressive, right? But it's what I wanted to do. As a matter of fact, the best vlogs I've ever made have been on this phone at any rate. Um, we had a little falling out. We just messaged each other right now and I think we're gonna rekindle that, that relationship, which is good. All I'm trying to say is things are redefined and it can't just be all theory and no action, but it also can't be all action and no theory. You gotta find a middle ground. And I think that's where I'm at right now with this filmmaking 2.0. I'm not trying to break any ground here. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. The truth is, it's in our court. And I decided to do a, da a daily vlog and I get to film make every single day. And it's pretty lucrative for me. Eventually I'm going to be able to afford and invest into a laptop so I'll be able to edit while I'm on the bus. That's gonna be very lucrative for me. I came to Austin and I had nothing once again. I didn't even have gear. Uh, I traded whatever camera gear that I had left and I, and I upgraded into audio gear. And now I got the podcast that I do on the side with Dave Back Beyond, link in the description. And I'm only saying that because I like to start from scratch, but now I'm kind of building and collecting stuff for myself. Uh, and it's great. And I really want to hold on to these things. Working with Robert Gardner has been an incredible experience for me. I learned a lot from this guy, not just with business, but also where he sees the future. And also his industry is just like a little snow globe. He's really gonna shatter that fucking glass ceiling. And I wanna be a part of that. But he's a, he's a partner of mine. And because of him, I'm able to do these sorts of things. All I had was my iPhone before I met him. And because of him, he's been a bit of a producer in my life. And I'm very fortunate for that. I kind of wanted to ask this other guy if he could kind of help me out and do the same thing because I wanted to help him. And it's kind of hard for me to ask for money. All I need is just the, you know, the guitar and the microphone and I'll, I'll weep for you. You know what I mean? I don't really give a shit about money even though, guess what? I'm a poor motherfucker. I need money. Don't get me wrong. It's life, right? But, you know, we get to transcend the tools. I mean, we're the instrument, the filmmakers. And it never used to be this way. The Quentin Tarantinos, the Paul Thomas Andersons, the David Lynch, they, they, they didn't have what we have. We get to do this stuff every day. We get to make quasi documentaries and post them on YouTube and post them on Facebook and we get to be the future. It's fucking exciting. We get to exercise our medium. We get to exercise our craft and reach outside ourselves and get better every single day. You know, without the cost of millions of dollars, it's fucking exciting. And we get to story tell to boot. So I guess I'm only, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, you know, but the truth is I love the new shit that is going on right now and that is happening with me. And I think, you know, are there people that vlog? Yes. Are there people that are very creative about it? Yes. Are there people that are consistent about it? Yeah. Do they identify as filmmakers? Maybe some do. I guess I'm just, I'm just very excited because, you know, I, I used to be a narrow minded motherfucker and I used to just think narrative feature films was the only game in town. But it's not that way anymore. Once July is finished, I'm going to create a film out of all the vlogs that I've made, which I've saved. And I'm gonna create a little, I don't know, it could be 10 minutes, it could be 100 minutes. A little best of compilation of what I've done this month. And it's really gonna encapsulate my thesis and everything that I've been saying, not just this day in the life stuff, but also the new shit. The new long form, short form, narrative, filmmaking, whatchamacallit, doohickey, discma floppy, I don't know what you wanna call it, and it doesn't matter. Labels don't matter. Actions combined with theory and execution is what stays, and it's what I wanna leave behind. And it's all I've ever cared about. And I want people out there, the future collaborators that I'm gonna work with one day, I want you to understand my intentions first and foremost. Like I said, this is very inside baseball. You might not give a shit about this and I understand that and I accept that and I think that's fine. But for all the filmmakers out there that I have inspired and that I will continue to inspire and that inspire me, 
I want you to understand right now that this is the new shit and this is the thesis and we're making it up as we go along but it's fucking exciting and it's never been a better time to be a filmmaker the ball is in your court decide what you want to do with it oh how do I monetize from that how do I monetize you know what there's only like three ways to monetize anything man but how do you make money and pay your bills doing this how about you do this while you bust your ass and you work the, the you know the nine to five and you work the day job and once this bucket is overflowing and it can supersede the other bucket and you can actually you know pay your bills with this shit then you can quit the other job how about you fucking do that nobody says that enough man and yeah I'm doing it and it's not fucking easy for everybody and I get it but you know what if you want it bad enough you'll do it and it's never been easier I'm making this on an iPhone I'm shooting this on a fucking selfie stick it is raining and I'm hiding under a tree what is so fucking cinematic and incredible and epic about this nothing other than the fact that I'm doing it every vlog every podcast is a mountain and once we record a podcast and we flip it and we upload it and it's on iTunes and it's on SoundCloud it's a mountain and I'm looking down at the summit and I get to say I did it every vlog this thing this is probably gonna be a 10 minute video I have no fucking idea but when it's done I get to upload it I get to flip it I get to share it and I get to look down at the summit and I get to say I did it and funny thing happens when you do something consistently and you do something forever not only do you get fucking good at it but you get to share it and guess what people start to dig your shit people start to listen people start to pay attention you start gaining a following and sometimes for, you know for me anyways that's more important than monetizing a fucking video being able to meet people man when I came to Austin I got nothing and now you know I get to meet with new people I, I started from scratch I went to Craigslist you know I wasn't so fucking precious about it I didn't think my shit didn't stink but I did the fucking work because I love the game I fucking love it and it's it doesn't owe me anything I'm not romantic about it I don't think you know I'm precious I don't think I'm special I'm busier now than I've ever fucking been and I, I, I trust me this isn't me sucking my own dick but it's I, I, I'm just as perplexed as you are the answers are right there go out there and do it and watch what fucking happens that's all I'm doing and it's been pretty fucking rewarding thus far all the Facebook lives the hundred hours of content that I've been able to make I mean Jesus fucking Christ you you spend six months writing a script you spend three months casting and finding the locations and and getting that budget and then you film the movie it's 30 days of shooting so that's actually 30 days of being creative and productive and let's call that another 20 days of actually editing the edit editing the thing together so you got 60 days of being creative throughout a year and then it's another two or three years before you make another movie just make stuff every day just film every day why because you can the freedom floating on